Hi, and welcome to the December 2023 Born Review. I'm Susan Barlow. First with some headline news and announcements. On December 6, we had the first snowfall in Bourne, and it didn't go very well. The Bourne Bridge was a slippery mess and was temporarily closed so it could be treated. This caused a traffic backup during the morning rush hour with commutes that would normally take only 15 minutes taking over an hour. Bourne had, hadn't had any significant snowfall in the last couple of years. Maybe we're out of practice. Well, let's hope, fingers crossed, for a mild winter this winter. Over $1 billion is sought for the new Sagamore Bridge, and the good news is that a $372 million grant has just been awarded to the Mass DOT and the Army Corps of Engineers to help replace the bridges. The Homeless for the Holidays event in Bourne collected and distributed to children in need 52,543 toys. Now there's a Merry Christmas. They provided 71,106 pounds of food to the Friends of Bourne Food Pantry and accepted $422,346 in monetary donations. Well done, Bourne. Some cool fun was had on New Year's Day in Bourne with the 27th annual New Year's Polar Plunge at Monument Beach. The plunge is also a fundraiser for the Bourne Food Pantry. The amount raised will be announced at the plunge dinner party next month. Wreaths Across America was held at the National Cemetery in Bourne on December 16th. After the ceremony, volunteers placed hundreds of wreaths on the gravestones in the cemetery. On December 29th, sadly, a dead minke whale was found washed up on Sagamore Beach. The whale was 25 feet long and weighed approximately 7,000 pounds. The International Federation for Animal Welfare, IFAW, are working to determine the cause of death. State Senator Susan Moran is not going to run for re-election. On November 30th, she announced she's going to run for the Barnstable Superior Court Clerk in November's election. State Representative Dylan Fernandez, a Democrat currently representing Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, the Elizabeth Islands, and parts of Falmouth, has announced he will run for Susan Moran's Senate seat. Democrat Owen G. Fletcher of Osterville announced he will run for the 5th Barnstable District State Rep currently held by Republican Stephen G. Zaros. Mr. Fletcher has served as clerk for the Barnstable County Assembly of Delegates since 2021. Here's a look at the calendar. Born newcomers and neighbors will hold a social at the Sportsman's Club, which is located at 199 MacArthur Boulevard, on January 16th at 5.30. You can enjoy a buffet dinner and a presentation by Nancy A. Franks. She'll tell the story of the great... Boston Molasses Flood of 1915, and how cadets of what is now Mass Maritime Academy helped with the rescue and recovery of the victims. It's $35 for members and $38 for non-members. You must register and then pay in advance. Mail your check to BNN, P.O. Box 525, Monument Beach, Massachusetts 02553. 
BNN will also host a Lunch and Learn event at the Jonathan Bourne Public Library on February 13th. Melissa Ferretti, Chair and President of the Herring Pond Wampanoag Tribe, will talk about Wampanoag culture, history, and place-based knowledge. Bring a bag lunch to the library and enjoy the talk from 11.30 to 1 p.m. The cost is only $5 for members and $7 for non-members. For more information about the Bourne Newcomers and Neighbors Club, visit BourneNewcomers.org or find them on Facebook. Now for our top stories. Congress did not include additional funds for the Army National Guard's proposed multi-purpose machine gun range on Joint Base Cape Cod in their National Defense Authorization Act, which was passed on December 14th. Back in 2020, Congress approved $9.7 million for the range, but the bids for the project totaled $15.5 million. The Association to Preserve Cape Cod worked with our congressional delegation to try and exclude any additional funding for the range, which has been determined by the EPA to be a threat to the Cape's drinking water supply. In spite of these findings, the Army National Guard continued to seek funding to go forward with the gun range. There are other alternatives for machine gun training. New ranges are being built at Fort Devens in a location that does not threaten a public drinking water source. Should Joint Base Cape Cod remain open? The Cape Cod Commission announced it will update the master plan at Joint Base Cape Cod. It was last updated in 1998 by the Cape Cod Commission, the military, town, and regional officials. So much has changed on the base and around the base. In 2005, the Federal Base Align Realignment and Closure Commission, known as BRAC, made decisions that had a fundamental impact on Joint Base Cape Cod. The Air Defense Mission of the Air National Guard's 102nd Fighter Wing was relocated to the western part of Massachusetts. The focus of the update will be on the capacity of the land at the base to meet the community needs for housing, economic development, renewable energy, and wastewater and solid waste management. Mass Development recently contracted a consultant to work with the base, town officials, and local and regional stakeholders to create a reuse plan for the excess parcels the base has identified for development of affordable housing. The base land is owned by the state of Massachusetts and consists of approximately 22,000 acres, or about 30 square miles. The winter solstice celebration was held at Uptuxet on December 21st. This annual event is hosted by the Bourne Historical Society in the Lions Family Pavilion at Uptuxet. Locally caught oysters were cooked on the grill and crock pots of soup lined the back wall of the pavilion and a huge array of cookies and cakes were available for dessert. The event was free and open to the public. Visitors were encouraged to make a lantern and take a walk along the lighted path to the grassy circle overlooking the canal, where a sort of representation of our solar system was created with paper lanterns. Guests were encouraged to write thoughts of things they would like to let go of in the year and thoughts of aspirations and resolutions and hopes for the new year on slips of paper and put them into the house of hope and regret. And together we're going to watch our mistakes fall to the ashes and our hopes rise to the heavens. So, with that said, let's, uh, the house of hope and regret. Send a thank you to Joya for building this beautiful house for us. Oh, thank you. I wasn't able to be here to watch it. But... <laughs> it was very exciting. 
Here's what's happening downtown. Places has opened at 125 Main Street. Owners Lauren De Gregorio and Tim Pickett have developed a unique space. I went downtown to find out what it's all about and meet with them. All right. Hi, I'm Tim Pickett. I'm Lauren De Gregorio, and welcome to Oh Places. Places. So we're located here at 125 Main Street in Buzzards Bay, and together we've formed our dream that incorporates art, music, and joy to our community. We first started this business um, approximately four weeks ago. Yeah, about a month ago. And we came together to collaborate and create this dream, not only for ourselves, but for our community too. Our facility is broken down into four compartments. And first we have our community artisanal showcase cubbies where our local creative community members can rent a cubby and they can design it any way they want to showcase things that they make. Um, and then they have a QR code where people can go directly to their website, um, their link tree, their form of payment and purchase goodies directly from talented community members. The next spot we have is where we are right now, which is our light lounge. This is a place where kids can interact, where adults can interact, and sometimes people just want to uh, digest the day or decompress. Then we move into the art studio where we will be teaching guided art classes as well as free expression art. We will have people come in and host classes and show off their talents and skills, and it's just a place where who knows what's going to happen, but it's going to be beautiful and it's going to be fun. So we also host events, such as birthday parties, retirement parties, family get-togethers, class reunions. If you can dream it, we can theme it. That's right. <laughs> and then I think the most exciting part of this, and I have really just been inspired, is our music lounge. I find that music really brings people together. Comedy and music will stop a fight. We incorporate music with the kids for our juice box karaoke, which gives the kids a chance at exploring the music that they might not have in school, but also having a chance to play with their friends in an environment that's not so regimented. At night, we turn into an open mic karaoke where you can bring your instruments and actually play along with other musicians to the music. And some nights we'll be offering paint nights and different events to change it up for all ages, all abilities. Uh, we are going to be having bingo nights, comedy nights, craft nights, heavy metal craft nights with the dads. Um, there's a lot of things that are going to be going on in this space. In a space like this, the possibilities are literally limitless. If you can dream it, we can theme it. Come on down to a place this and let us show you firsthand just how awesome this place really is. Here's what's happening at the library. The Upper Cape Camera Club's photos will be on display at the library from January 5th to the end of January. Do you have the new Clams app? You can download this handy app for Apple and Android devices. What's bullet journaling? This is a system that combines elements of mindfulness, productivity, and it empowers you to become the author of your own life, allowing you to track the past, organize the present, and plan for the future. On Thursday, January 18th, you can check out bullet journaling during a program at the library. It's free, and the library will supply all the materials. What was your favorite book of 2023? Well, Area Finn, Library Director, and Kathy Fox Alfano, Library Trustee, talk about some of their favorites. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Can you believe it's 2024? I can't. It seemed like a week ago it was 2023. It does seem that way, doesn't it? Oh, wait, it, it was. <laughs> right. You know what's funny about the end of the year? I remember growing up, they always had the famous people who died during yes. the year, and you'd watch yep. like the last two oh, weeks yeah. of ABC yep. News. And now I'm older, and the only lists I look at are what were the best books of last ah, year, or okay. what are the up-and-coming books for next year. Yes, yes. So what was your favorite? Tell me about the books you loved last year. Okay, so I discovered two series that I thought was really good and they're semi-related. One is The Maid, which we have talked about before by Nina Prouse and really quirky. It's a mystery but it's not a gory mystery. Okay. Um, it's much more about the characters who are in a hotel 
She's a maid in a hotel, and she's on the spectrum, and she's hilarious. And now there is a follow-up called The Mystery, the Mystery Guest, Guest, which is, yes, once again, at the hotel. And Five yeah, years later. Yes, and now things have somewhat changed and somewhat not changed. Um, but it is a great follow-up. Some people think it's even better than the first one. So I would highly recommend that because they are both entertaining as well as a mystery. Okay. Right? And then the other series that I really, really like um, is by an author I hadn't heard of before, but apparently she's been around for a while, which is Frida McFadden. And she has done The Housemaid, oh. which is totally different than The Maid, although, they, yes, they both clean for a living, but that's the only thing that's the same. In The Maid, it's much, much more of a thriller and a turn, page turner. And now there is a follow-up to that as well called The Housemaid's Secret. Oh. And what I will tell you is if you enjoy books where nothing is what you think it is, this is it. It was really, really good. And now I've started to read other books by Frida McFadden. Here's one I just got. And everything I've read by her has been really a page turner, really thrilling. And so I would uh, definitely recommend any books by Frida McFadden and then the two by Nina Prouse. Okay, well, I'm going to recommend one that isn't as much a mystery. It's a historical fiction, but there is a murder. So I guess that counts as a mystery. I might have talked about it before. Frozen River by Arielle Lahan. Oh. oh, my gosh. It takes place in the 1700s, and the main character is a midwife in the Kennebec, Maine region when it was still part of the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, the oh. District of Maine. And a person is found frozen in the river, oh. dead, and she is a really strong character for her time and how much leeway her husband gives her and how he taught her to read and things like that. It, really riveting. And right up to the end, I wasn't quite sure who killed the frozen guy. So that mm. was one that I really enjoyed. So Frozen River by Lahan, L-A-W-H-O-N. Right. Available electronically, in print, the usual. And going back to my, <laughs> I sort of guess, a mystery kick because there's so many good ones out there. Um, anything by Lisa Jewell. This is, her, I think, her latest, None of This is True. Again, if you like Colleen, uh, Colleen Hoover or any of the other sort of mystery, psychological, whatever. Twisty? Twisty, yeah. Twisty. Pick up anything by Lisa Jewell. Really, really good. Okay. Well, I have a nonfiction suggestion, and it was a title that I listened to on audio on a, um, over the holidays called The Art Thief by Michael ah, Finkel. Okay. Wow. The narrator is amazing. And then I was reading it and get in the car, listen to it. And it's about a young man who definitely a sociopath. Um, he and his girlfriend in their early 20s steal hundreds of pieces of art, silver, bronze, all over Europe in plain sight. And he hides all of it and how Switzerland didn't talk to Austria, didn't talk to Germany. So... They were very, they were nonchalant, they were well-dressed, they would go into the museums, and she was the lookout, and he would swipe the stuff. Wow. Incredible how he finally got caught. I mm -hmm. mean, I'm not giving the plot away, you could Google his name, but just how his family life, what motivated him to steal, it was great. And if you, if I didn't tell you it was nonfiction, you would have thought you were reading a mystery book. That's how much wow. I like. Wow. Yeah, okay. and that's rare. And who's the author? Michael Frinkel. Okay. No, I'm sorry, Finkel. F I N K E L. Okay. Also available on audio from Libby. Um, so that's one that we always like to. Sure, especially if you like the whole thing we've been doing on the Isabel Stewart Gardner exactly. heist and whatever. Exactly. This is just another, yeah, it's a different continent, but the same thing. Uh, and then, of course, what bestseller wouldn't be without Oath and Honor, Liz okay. Cheney. Right now, that has the most holds of any book in the Claims wow. Consortium. Wow. It's up around 300, 400. Interesting. So we have multiple copies, again, available electronically. We have two express copies. Um, whatever your politics, I think she just is an interesting person. Yeah. Um, to, she's been through it. She's been through it, yeah. exactly. Yep. Exactly. Another woman who's been through it is Elizabeth Zahn. Who's Elizabeth Zott, you say? Ah, she's in Lessons in Chemistry, which was one of the big, biggest books of last year. I think it was the Le most, most, yes. most taken out book in the Boston Public Library last year. So it is, it's a good one. Uh, it's intriguing. 
it also is quite a commentary on women in the 50s, oh, right? Uh, 50s have we progressed 60s? at all, you wonder? We have. Okay. But not, not as much as we'd like to. So, uh, but that is not what this is about, really. It's, no, and now that it's been made into a television series, right. there's a complete resurgence in the interest, and it's back up in the over 100 people waiting for this book. You have to ask, what, what's going on in kids? Here and born, the ever-popular Pete the Cat. <laughs> Pete the Cat's groovy imagination. Pete the Cat crayons rock. Always popular. Always go out. When the new book comes out, there's six or seven people already waiting for it. Really? So Pete the Cat. There's also another series that Terry Johnson, our children's librarian, recommended. And it's a whole series of grumpy books. <laughs> so this one is The Sour Grape. Okay. And then there's one, The Bitter Lemon. And they're just kind of fun. Um, the Cool Bean, The Good Egg. So they're all kind of cute little great illustrations. Nice. Um, definitely a fun read-along if you're looking for something to read that isn't so tedious that you so fall asleep. You're entertained. Exactly. Yes, yes. And then the other one, speaking of our theme of grumpy, Grumpy Monkey, Up All Night. <laughs> Again, great illustrations. Um, you know, it's dark. Oh. And just really cool, big print, different fonts. I mean, it's really well done. Cool. The other book that, again, this is another mystery-ish, um, is the, the whole series of the Thursday Murder Club, which I, I adore. I just think it is so funny. It is written by a comedian from England called Richard Osman. And his mother was in, or I think is still in, an assisted living or independent living or whatever. And that's where he I got his- I can see his, where this is going. That's where he got his ideas. And it's, um, it starts out with, with four people who uh, sort of stumble on some information about a murder. And it just goes from there. And as the series progresses, you get to know these characters very well. Okay. There's some secrets in their background. It's, and it's both funny, entertaining, and of course there is always a mystery to solve. Okay. And they always seem to be better at it than the local police. <laughs> who no of, commentary. Yes, who's the, who then sort of just become part of the group. So it's really entertaining, and there's four of them. So I, and read them in order. You have to read them in order. So okay. it's the, What's Thurs the first one? The Thursday Murder Club okay. by Richard Osmond. So I would go. definitely suggest that. Curl up with a cup of tea. There you go. A yeah. cuppa. A cuppa, yep. And then on a serious note, um, Fire Weather, a true story from a hotter world, which is one of the National Book Award finalists this oh, year, okay. uh, recommended by Colleen, our assistant director. Um, it talks about the Great Fire in 2016 in Alberta Camp. Alberta, Canada, um, and the effect that weather is having on forest fires. It talks about climate change. It talks about global warming, how the earth is becoming warmer. She said really a riveting, um, what did she call it? A great piece of research, a riveting story. Wow. So again, fire weather, fi fire weather a true story from a hotter world. Uh, what was your favorite movie this year? Barbie. Oppenheimer. So aren't we just the typical? <laughs> yeah. uh, what else did you see this year that you not a lot liked or didn't like? I don't get to go to the movies very much. Well, did you know that we have all the hot movies here? Yes, I do. Okay, and did you check them out from here? Oh well, for those of you who are wondering, the Oscar race is on, mm. and the movies are starting to come out. Uh, the Holdovers with Paul Giamatti. We oh, have I want to see that. Two copies. Yes. Oh, now she's interested. Yes. Um, we have those copies, also an express copy. Um, Past Lives, um, Saltburn. Trying to think of the others. So all of the hot titles that I think will be Oscar nominees are on order as soon as they're available on DVD. So check the catalog, even if it isn't out on DVD, get your name on the list. Oh yeah, yeah. Definitely. But I still say Oppenheimer's gonna take it all. And Boom. you say, what do they call it, Barbenheimer? Barbenheimer. Yes. Barbenheimer. <laughs> <laughs> and that's what's going on at the library. Yeah, come on down. The Born Food Pantry is located at 121 Main Street. It's open Tuesdays from nine to noon. You can reach the pantry by phone Mondays through Wednesdays at 508-759-3351.
Meals on Wheels is looking for drivers to deliver meals in Bourne. Please call Elder Services of Cape Cod at 508-394-4630. The Council on Aging located in the Bourne Community Building is available for seniors 60 years and older. Sorry to say that the Bridge Cafe is closed indefinitely. AARP Tax Aid Program will return for low-income seniors at the Bourne Council on Aging. This program is for Bourne residents only. Appointments will be available after January 8th. Need a ride? Transportation services for grocery shopping is available Tuesdays and Thursdays and transportation to medical appointments on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays. You can call Shauna to schedule your ride 48 hours in advance. 508-759-0600, extension 5224. Need help with a gadget? There's gadget tech assistance at the Council on Aging. Help with your iPhone, laptop, or tablet. Call the COA and schedule your free one-on-one -on -one appointment. There's also foot care appointments with Dr. Gavigan for Bourne residents on Monday, February 5th. Call to schedule an appointment. There's a $30 fee. Men's Fitness with Nikki Courtney of the VNA begins Mondays at 9 a.m. Call the VNA to register. That number is 508-957-7423. This program's free. There's also Tai Chi classes with David Gizaday. They're $7 per class on Tuesdays at 3 p.m. Learn how to follow the Mediterranean diet with Therapy Gardens. Their program will be held on Tuesday, January 9th at 1 p.m. Please call the COA office to register. 508-759-0600, extension 5300. To find out about additional programs, and there's lots of them, check out their newsletter online. Go to townaborn.com and click on the Department Council on Aging. Then select Newsletter from their menu on the left. Here's some beautiful photography by area photographers showing the beauty that surrounds us. Be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with what's happening in Bourne. Well, thanks so much for watching this episode of the Bourne Review. From all of us at Bourne TV, we wish you a happy, healthy, and safe 2024. Happy New Year!